Welcome back, Knitters. This is Jana with Pearl Together. This is block 19 of our long-term Afghan knit along. Now the pattern is Nora's Vintage Afghan. It's only 20 blocks, so we're almost there. I say only 20 blocks. It's been quite a process. We've been doing one block a month for the last, well, little over a year and a half. So we're getting right down to it. We're 95% done. I can't believe it. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of new techniques that I've learned and been able to share with you, so that's been really enjoyable. Before we get started with Block 19, though, I want to welcome three new patrons this time. Nancy Lovelady, Kathleen Connolly, and Mary Pfeffer. Thanks so much for joining me over at Patreon.com. I'm offering several benefits for your small monthly pledge. You can check that out at Patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together. All right, let's get started with Block 19. Okay, here we are at the beginning of block 19, and this one starts out the same as all the others, where we have just four rows of garter stitch after the cast on. Uh, row five is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way across, and then four more rows of garter stitch until we get to the increase row. Okay, as with the other increase rows, we're going to knit one, make one. And when I make one, I just pick up the bar in between and knit into the back of that loop. So it's actually a left leaning increase, but left or right doesn't matter so much with just this block. So knit one, make one, and then we're gonna knit two, make one, and do that 27 times all the way across the row. If you don't wanna keep track of how many times that is, you're just gonna keep doing that until you have two stitches left. So again, the make one, I just lift up the bar between, this bar right between these stitches, I just lift that up and then a knit right into the back of that. If your needles are not pointy enough to knit in the back, you can kind of roll your needles around like that in order to get that needle into the back of that stitch. So I'm just gonna do that all the way across and then double count that I have 86 stitches at the end of my increase row. Okay, I finished the increase row and I do have 86 stitches. So the increase row was in effect row 10, which was an even numbered row. So now, even though we're on an odd numbered row, and normally you begin that on the right side of your work, um, in this chart, they ask us to begin on the wrong side. The instructions say after the increase row, begin wrong side, work rows one through 38 of chart 19. So we're starting on row one on the wrong side, so we're gonna be knitting this direction. So make sure that you read your chart notes here, where it shows how to work the chart, beginning at A, if you're going on the right side, you'd go across here and you'd repeat the section between B and C and then end with D. And then when you're on the odd numbered rows, you're gonna be working back this direction. So as with any chart, when we work flat, we go across and up and over and up and over rather than just going round and round. So if you're unfamiliar with how to read a chart, I have a link down below where you can review and get instructions if you're new to that. So we're starting on row one here and we're just gonna go across from left to right, from D, repeating the part between the red lines and then ending at A. Then when we get to row two, I'll show you how to manage this uh, right twist. Okay, I'm on row two and I have arrived at that first yellow symbol, which is a right twist. So it's really very simple. You're just gonna go and put your right hand needle in as if you're gonna knit two together and you'd go ahead and do that and pull on this and give yourself a little bit of slack. Don't take those stitches off the left hand needle just yet. Just give yourself a little bit of slack, make that loop a little bit bigger. I mean, not, not extremely, but a little. And then go back into the first stitch and knit that. Okay, then you take both of them off. And what that's gonna do is twist everything and create, if you do several of them in a row, it'll create kind of a faux, kind of a fakie cable appearance. So I'll show you that one more time on the next, the next stitch here, knit or purl four, and then we're gonna do that again here where we have these two knit stitches, we're gonna do a right twist. So go in as if you're knitting two together and do that, make that loop a little bigger and go back and knit into the only the first one, then take both of them off. Well now let me show you what you need to do to if you have to if you have to tink that back, if you have to frog that back, or not frog it, but tink that back for some reason, if you notice a mistake back here and you wanna take that out, it's really the same. You're gonna go in underneath this first knit stitch, just like you would, and then you're gonna go in under the the rear one and just simply take, take that off, okay? 
So let me show you that again. Knit those two together as if normal and then just knit the first one again. Okay. Then if you find that you have to tink it back, go in under this first stitch and then in under the one in the back and just pull the loops out. There you go. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, we're gonna carry on for the next several rows until we get to the red symbol with the pearl dots in it. And I'll show you that. And that will occur, I believe, on row eight. Okay, I'm at the beginning of row eight and I've knitted across completing the right twist. Don't those look cool? They look like mini cables, even though they're not. That's really neat. Um, so I've knitted across, I'm on row eight and I'm about to begin that red symbol with all the dots. So the first thing that tells me is there's gonna be some different stuff involved um, rather than just a straight up three over three cable. So if you look at the instructions, it, the instructions tell us to slip four to the cable needle and hold them in the front. Now these little cable needles that I have are by Brittany. They come in a three pack and I'll put the link down below in the description. Um, but they're just really lightweight and you can tell they're, they're tapered where the inner part is a little bit thinner than the the center section on the right and left side. So that helps them to stay put. So I really like those and usually end up just tucking it behind my ear when I'm not using it. So we're gonna slip those off to the cable needle and hold them in front and then purl two. Now I'm not doing this without a cable needle just because there's some other stuff that's gonna go on in here until I get used to it. I wouldn't even attempt that and I may not even do it then depending on how complicated this needs to be. Okay, so we're purl two, then we're gonna purl one uh, we're going to purl one, do a right twist, and then purl another from the cable needle. So we're going to purl one, we're going to do a right twist with these two knit stitches that are in the center of the cable needle. So that's straightforward enough. Not something I would do without a cable needle, obviously. And then we're going to purl the last one from the cable needle. So we're just taking that whole, that whole right twist section, so we're just shifting that over in the pattern design. Then right away we have that blue symbol which we're going to slip two stitches off on the cable needle and hold them to the back okay simple enough and then we're going to purl one do the right twist where you knit those two together bring it around the front and knit the first one again then purl the next so again we're just taking these four stitches keeping consistent with the right twist in the middle and shifting them over two stitches to the right. So we're gonna meet up with this bunch here in a few minutes probably. Then we're just gonna purl the two from the cable needle, as you probably predicted. Okay, and then I'll just carry on repeating that for the rest of the row. I'll show you those two in a moment when I get over to the next section where those are required. Okay, I'll show you those two maneuvers one more time. Again, I'm at the red symbol on row eight, and I'm gonna slip four to the cable needle and hold them to the front. Then I'm gonna purl the next two. Okay. Then I'm taking these four stitches and bringing them over so I can work them. I'm gonna purl that one. I'm gonna do my right twist with the two stitches in the center, keeping consistent with that column there. All right, then I'll purl the next one. Okay, now we're gonna do a similar thing, just the opposite, in fact, with that, with that blue maneuver where we're gonna take the next two and hold them to the back. Purl the first stitch. Complete the right twist with these. Purl the next one, and then purl the two from the cable needle. So that's pretty straightforward. So all we've done is shift those two columns of right twist stitches. This one shifted to the left, this one shifted to the right. And I would imagine they're pretty soon gonna cross over. Okay, just keep in pattern um, to the end of the row then. And then I'll meet up with you, it looks like on row 18, when we're introduced to a new cable maneuver with that green symbol. Okay, you can see what's happening here. We're having some definite crossovers and these are all the right twists within the cable. So that's really pronounced and stands up quite a bit from the background. So now I'm on row 18 and I've purled my way across up to that first green symbol. 
which instructs us to put four stitches on the cable needle and hold them to the front. This is really similar to the red one. The only difference is really going to be that instead of purling the next two stitches from here, we're going to purl one, then knit one, and then continue as we did with the stitches from the cable needle. So we'll purl one from there, do that right twist, and then purl the last one from the cable needle. So really that one stitch in the back is the only difference between the red symbol and the green. So we'll do this right twist in the middle of this that we're pulling over. Okay, purl that last one and then we just have two little purl stitches until we have two more of the red symbol. So again with the green symbol all we're doing is a little slight variation from the red one which is a cable to the left leaning to the left so it's four over two going to the left so we hold four of the stitches in the front we're going to purl one and knit one next and then purl one from the cable needle do our right twist Now again, when I do that right twist, I tend to uh, make sure that I'm pulling a little bit extra. When I do the loop, I kind of pull, I you know, pull that forward, and I give myself a little extra slack to do the twist portion. Okay, purl two more, and then carry on with the red symbols, and I'll see you on row twenty. Okay, I've arrived at row twenty, and I did all the knit and purl stitches up to the orange symbol. And now we're just gonna kind of do the opposite with how we treat the stitches that are behind the cable needle. So we're still putting four on the cable needle and holding it to the front. But last time with the green symbol, we knit one, we purled one and then knit one from the next, from the left needle. And now we're gonna do the opposite where we knit one, then purl the next, and then work the stitches from the cable needle just like we have been with one purl, the right twist in the middle, and then another purl. So that's really straightforward. All we've done is change the order in which we're knitting and purling the two that come after the ones we're holding aside. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, we'll get those off of here. And I'll show you that again in just a moment after I knit across to this other side, and then I'll show you that again. So all right, one more time on the orange symbol. And I will, the, what I wanted to point out is the only difference between the red, the green, and the orange symbols is how you treat these next two stitches after you set these to the front. So with the red one, you purl these next two, okay? With the green symbol, you purl one and then knit one. And then with the orange symbol, you knit one and purl one. So that's really the only difference. And that because you treat the ones that are coming off the cable needle the same, which with each of those three different maneuvers. Okay, so carry on all the way up to row 38 and then we'll knit through the chart again, ending on row 30 something, I wanna say 35, but that may not be correct. Um, I'm gonna carry on and I'll show you what this looks like when I get more of it done. Okay then, I've knitted through the chart one time all 38 rows, and then the second time up through row 35, ending on the wrong side. So that, I think that looks really cool. I really like how raised up these are. That's really an interesting technique. I would have never thought to have incorporated a right twist within a, a cable, but that's a really neat effect. I mean, that's something I'll file away for future use, definitely. So we're back to where we need to decrease down to where we have our original 57 stitches. Right, so the decrease row is just simply knit two together, knit one, knit two together 28 times. So that's really super simple. And then you should have 57 stitches. We're going to repeat what we have down here, regarder stitch with the alternating fifth row, and then we'll be ready to bind off and block. So I'm gonna go do those. I'm pretty sure you can handle that on your own at this point. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I've blocked it and everything is complete. We only have one more block and then we're going to assemble. So look for block 20 next month, assembly instructions in October, hopefully, if I can work that out. I'm going to I'm going to put mine together a little bit differently the the pattern calls for. So you can do, you know, you're the boss, you do it however you want, but I'm probably going to do a crochet assembly.
and I'll need my mom to help me with that because I'm not so adept at crocheting. So watch for that in October. If you're done already, kudos to you. Show us uh, photos in the Facebook or the Ravelry group. I'd love to see your Afghans and your progress over there. As always, if you have any questions or drop me a comment down below, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.